All right, Shalom, Wild Men's World. Once again, it's the Brother Kalab here to the Spirit to bring out another video. But before I get started, I want to give all honor and glory to my power, which is Yahweh, Kalab, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakadash, and Thwadiyah, Bashim Yahushai, our Heavenly Father, uh, which is allowing me to come out with another video and to speak um, until something I wanted to bring out, which is, well, I'll start with this, you know, um, the nation of Israel. We are approaching a time where Yahweh Bashim is going to bestow mercy upon his remnant and our suffering and our affliction and this bitter captiv captivity is about to be done away with. So with that, I have Luke chapter 21 and 28. It says, and when these things begin to come to pass, and this is speaking of all the signs and effects that we're seeing, right? You're seeing uh, just a tumult or a utopia of 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 judgment that Yahweh Bashim is bringing upon the earth. So that's what that's talking about. And then it says, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So with the salvation, the deliverance of the nation of Israel coincides with the destruction, which the buildup would be, you know, major catastrophes, calamities, um, you know, the earth being plagued. And I'll go into that to the spirit, but we're coming into a time where Yahweh Bashim is getting ready to break our yoke from our enemies, okay? Jeremiah chapter 30 and 8 says, First shall come to pass in that day, saith the Adawan of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and the stranger shall serve no more him serve him serve themselves of him. So um also I don't I don't know if I'm gonna get it, I might just paraphrase. So that's what that's talking about. Well Yahweh Shah is getting right to burst the bonds, uh the 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 yoke the bonds from our from our captives you know we are yet in captivity to this day and you have the day of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is uh, coincides also with the deliver with our deliverance we are going to be set free through us through a salvation right but we we suffered this affliction from for our transgression up until now up until this time where the time of the which is the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Being that they had rule over us, their time of rulership is at an end, and our time to rule is at hand. So I wanted to speak on as well because I have these queued up from yesterday, and um, I just want to make sure I get this out. So for us to receive that salvation, we're to, you know, observe Yahweh Shemashah His commandments and seek Him with the whole heart, and uh, He has commanded us as well to make our bodies a living sacrifice and to call on him and to cry unto him for our transgression, um, for the afflictions that we are suffering, right? Baruch chapter 4 and 21 says, Be a good cheer, O my children, crying to the Adawan, and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies. And that's through the Spirit. That's what we've been doing. And we, and through the Spirit, all the Akim is pushing, is pushing harder um, and crying unto the Adawan because, you know, the spirit, you know, we want out of here. You know, we're hastening the day of Hamashiach Yeshai. We're hastening in our salvation, our redemption, and us to be broken, uh, these bonds of, of captivity to be broken. Why? That's why the scripture says the captive exile, uh, the, cap the captive exile, see, uh, well, do the spirit, I'll grab it. Um, uh, just, uh, I don't, I don't want to veer from this. Let me continue. I don't want to stop. Grab it. It says, "For be of good cheer, O my children, crying to the Adawan, and he will deliver you. The captive exile. Let me grab that. I just have to get it. So this is what we're crying unto y'all about Shemal Shai to the spirit. The captive exile. KGV, if you bear with me. Right here. The captive exile hasten that we may be loosed and that we should not die in the pit, nor that his bread shall fail. So that's ultimately to the spirit what we're doing, okay? The scripture says, Be of good cheer, O my children, kind to the Ottawan, you know, that we may be loosed, and, and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of our enemies. For my hope is to for my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you, and joys come and joy is come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting of our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh will give you, give you to me again, with joy and gladness forever. Like as the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, our enemies, right, these strangers that they have served them, so, so they're not going. The scriptures say, um, um, the the stranger shall not serve himself no more, right? 
It says, it says, and it says, the outer one of hosts, that I will break a yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and the strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Of who? Of the nation of Israel. Okay. Verse 20, Baruch 4 and 23, For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Verse 24, Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they surely see your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yahweh, for the enemy hath persecuted thee, but surely thou shalt see his destruction, and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways, and and, and we're going to tread on our enemy's neck. And this, and the, our enemies is going to behold our salvation. Okay? It says, when they see it, they shall be in terrible fear. Um, basically, because they they did not regard, they're not looking towards the, us being the holy ones of Israel. Through the Spirit, I'm going to grab that one, because this will help me. I don't know, so I'm going to bring this out. I don't want to you to keep the spirit on me that I go out tonight. That's that was a little beep right there. I don't want to Um what was I saying? Um oh man, see, I I don't want to come back to me. Read that again. Cause it's how this thing is. The spirit is 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 just touchy, you know. Um it says, For I send you with mourning and weeping, but go but Yahweh will will give thee you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see your salvation from your power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. And I remembered it to the Spirit. I don't know if I'm going to come back to that, which is, which is this is what they're going to see, that Yahweh is going to deliver us from our enemies. They shall, when they see it, when they see it, KGV, Beautiful. Wisdom of Psalm chapter 5 and 1 says, When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. These people ain't looking towards uh, you so-called Hispanics, Native Americans, so-called African Americans to be the ones set free and put on high. All right, they're going to tremble when they see this. Baruch chapter 4 and 25 says, My children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yahweh, for the enemy hath persecuted thee, but surely thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones, the nation of Israel, my delicate ones have gone my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught in the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto the and cry unto Yahweh, for he shall remember of him that brought these things upon you, for as it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh, so being returned, seek him ten times more, for he hath brought these plagues upon you, upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with this salvation. So that's that's the push. We're to we're to cry unto Yahweh, we're to seek him ten times more. Because we see the buildup. We want to be made ready for that deliverance and we want to be given our all. Um it's like in regards to crying, crying unto Yahweh, Hashem, Yahshai. What else do I got through the Spirit? <clears throat> I see our enemies, our enemies continuously pushing <clears throat> iniquity upon us because he doesn't want us to be delivered. He doesn't want us to return to the Adwan Yahweh, Hashem, because he understands if we stay in this condition, it will be will be down forever. You know. So there's going to come a, down, a time to the grace of Hamashiach Yahshua that our sins is going to be wiped away. Jeremiah chapter 50 and 20 says, In those days and in that time, saith the Adawan, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought, sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, they shall not be found. For I will pardon them who, whom I have reserved. Whom has he re reserved? The 144,000 that were well, let me see if I get. Let me see if I get that Jeremiah chapter. Let me see if there's more, and then I want to all get that. That those the hundred forty four thousand that were found with no guile. It says, "In those days, in that time, saith the Adawan, the iniquity of, of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I have reserved." Go okay, and then so that to the spirit right, um. That were found 
no guile. So this is the time that Yahweh Shemashah is going to find us innocent through the Spirit. Let me see if Revelation chapter 14, beautiful. This is this is the ones that are going to be spotless, spotless and adorned and ready and made uh ready for the marriage, which is uh, to be reunited and saved to Hamashiach Yahushai. Revelations chapter 14 and 1 says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder. And I heard a vo voice of harpers harping with their heart will be, be, be going to be celebrated. I mean, basically, it's going to be a grand event. And they sung, and this is speaking of, of us, well, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the, this song about us and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, which are redeemed from the earth. We were redeemed uh, through the blood of the lamb, which is Hamashiach Yahushai. It says, and these they... It says, and these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with serve of God. These are redeemed from among men, being the fir first fruits unto Yahweh and to the Lamb. I don't want to say we be of that, that number. And this is why we're going to be, this is why this scripture is important right here to go back to it, to touch on it. It says, this is why we're going to be made. Uh, This is what links up with this one. Jeremiah chapter 31 and 31 said, oh, so like the wrong one. Oh, just bear with me here. That's that, you know. I got to get that memorized. That, that's it's a key scripture if you really think about it. Because that's the one that's beautiful. Jeremiah chapter 50 and 20, in those days and in that time, saith the Adawan, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, they shall not be found, for I will pardon them who, whom I reserved, which I explained to in Revelations just right now, the, who, who those are, which is 144,000, that some before the throne um, of Yahweh, and you know we were the ones that were been redeemed and found with no guile, right, to the Spirit, Revelations chapter 14 and 5 says, And in their mouth was found no guile, and they and they were without fault before the throne. And I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and every and every tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Free Yahweh, and give glory to him, for the hour of judgment is come, and worship him that is made in heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains. That's, that, that's what we're coming into. We're coming into Yah Bashim uh, redeeming his elect that we may glorify the Heavenly Father. And this is all gonna be this is all gonna happen very shortly. That's why Esau his desire is to keep us how he he doesn't want like in ancient times, he doesn't want to let us loose, you know. He doesn't want and how does he keep well, he accuses us day and night before before the Heavenly Father of our iniquity, but he is the one that's steady sowing iniquity to our people. I uh, just want to see where I'm going with this. So, so we're seeing everything line up to the scriptures. You know, we're coming back to the Heavenly Father. We're seeking Him ten times more with these videos and with us presenting our bodies as living sacrifice. So, Luke 21 and 28 says, "And when these, it says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh." That's what's on. That's that's what's, that's what's coming up. And these people are going to be troll and troll with terrible fear and, and more to the spirit. This is why Esau is jealous. This is why he wants to keep us down because all the promises and the covenants pertain, pertain to the nation of Israel. Let me grab that one through the spirit. Then I'll grab what I'm going to read. This is what he's jealous about. But first, let me explain. It says all the covenants pertain to. This is what he's jealous about because all the promises, we're, we're going about to be exalted on high. Romans chapter 9 and 4, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the glory and the covenants and the law and giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and, and the promises. So 
this is what this devil ultimately doesn't want to see. He doesn't want us to see us come back into fruition. He doesn't want us to see us be reconciled to the Heavenly Father. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 31 and 31 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Adawan, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day that I, not the first covenant, that I took them by the hand and bringing them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Adawan. We're going to, the new covenant, which is going to be the kingdom, verse thirty-three. That is to, that's going that is promised pertain to promises, which is promised unto the unto the elect unto the elect of the ultimately all Israel, but starting with the first fruits. And this is why this is what this devil seeks to offset. Uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty-one and thirty-three says, "But this shall be the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days," saith the out of one. I'll put my law in their inward parts and write. And this is what this devil is jealous about. He's trying to seek his own, his own, uh, his own kingdom, but it's a wicked kingdom. That's why Yahweh Shem is going to throw it down and write and write it and write it in their hearts. And I will be their power and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Adawan, for they shall all know me from the least. Of them to the greatest of them, saith the Adawan, for I'll give their for I will forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Adawan, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and the stars for the light by night, which divide the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Adawan of hosts is his name. And those oracles to and those ordinances depart from me, saith the Adawan. Then the seed of Rizr also shall cease from being a nation. It says, also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith the Ottawa in heaven. If heaven and if heaven above can be measured in the foundation of the earth. Ooh, thus this is this is uh Yahweh to Esau. He this says, Thus saith the Ottawa, if heaven and it says, if heaven above can be measured in the foundation of the earth searches out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all the day for all that they have done, saith the Ottawa. It says, behold, so I believe this is the one we're saying. This is like a, a bet. This is the same, same bet. If if the saith if heaven can if if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all for all that they have done, say it say it to one. So through that, the most high how is pretty much tempting Esau to that's why this devil goes underneath uh, the sea. That's why he goes into outer space. He's trying to seek his own kingdom, but it's not possible. It's almost like it's almost like um, trying to give somebody an impossible task. Right. Verse 38 says, behold, the days come, saith the Ottawan, that the city shall be built to the Ottawan forever. I mean, the city shall be built to the Ottawan from the tower of Hanel unto the gate of the corner, and the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the, the hill herb and compass about the it says, and the whole valley. All right, so Esau doesn't want us to be redeemed because he knows what it means if we uh, would be redeemed, which is going to happen regardless. But he's trying to buy himself as much time. He's trying to offset all these promises because, well, this, because he knows. I'm just going to get Psalms chapter 2. This will be the easiest way to explain. He knows that this day is coming. So, and this is why they're raging. Psalms chapter 2 and 1 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth themselves, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Adawan and against the anointed saying, which is the anointed is 144,000. It says, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in heaven shall laugh. The Adawan shall have them. And so they think by feeding us pollution, by their sorceries and witchcraft and, and tempting us. Obviously, they're, they're, that's part of they're going to come with the MOTB. He seeks to destroy us. That we may not have dominion with Hamashiach, uh, that we not ha that we may be. Uh, he's trying to make us despicable in the sight of the heavenly Father. 
But Yah Bashim Hashem has reserved 7,000 men that's not going to bow down the knee. So he's doing everything in his wicked mind to pretty much offset the process of prophecy or pretty much to throw us off our path of rulership because he knows that this is coming. Psalms chapter 2 and 5. He then, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them with the sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, which is Yahweh Shai. I will declare the decree the Adon has said unto me, Thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for the inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. That's Esau losing his rulership. That's Esau, that's once we get our yoke, our bounds, the captive the exile. You know, we we desire to be let loose. We're gonna we're gonna go ham into our rulership and we're gonna take this devil down. Ask of me, and I shall give thee heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Ottawan with fear and rejoice with trembling. Okay, and that's what we do to the spirit. Kiss the sun. How do we kiss the sun? By us. By us. Be wise, therefore, or you kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Ottawan with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but little, blessed are they that put their trust in him. And through the spirit, that's what the elect is doing. And that's why Yahweh Shem Shai is going to make good on his word. So with the Ottawan, to Yahweh Shem Shai, let me expound more through the spirit. Or giving all honor and glory to my power, which is Yahweh, Kaala, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakadash, Dwari